You know, the Subaru Outback has always been something of an anomaly, and that's because this is considered a large SUV. So it competes against things like Toyota Kluger or Mazda CX-9. Now, there's no doubt that this looks, feels, and crucially drives more like a car than it does an SUV. So you might be shopping in that large segment, but you're actually buying something that feels a whole lot more like a car, and I think that's a factor for some buyers. This is the new Subaru Outback, and what's most interesting is, according to Subaru, things like the engine, for example, are 90% new, so there's significant changes under the skin. Importantly, it's available from under $40,000 before on-road costs, so the value equation is pretty strong as well. Let's take a look at the new Subaru Outback. The Subaru Outback range starts from $39,990 for the Outback all-wheel drive base model. Step up to the Sport and pricing starts from $44,490, while the Touring that we have at launch starts from $47,790. Across the range, Outback is well specified with standard equipment, including a new 11.6-inch portrait infotainment screen, a 4.2-inch LCD driver's display, auto LED headlights, 18-inch alloy wheels, auto stop start, and intelligent drive with sport mode. You'll be hard pressed to pick the differences on the outside between the new and the old model, but the cabin is incredibly versatile. Subaru cabins have usually always been comfortable and reasonably ergonomic, but I think there's one thing we can all agree on, and that's the fact that that two screen design was not just stupid, but it didn't really make any sense. It wasn't that easy to use. New Outback gets a much, much simpler infotainment system. It's an 11.6 inch touchscreen, and crucially, Subaru's gone with a portrait mode rather than landscape. Now, that might be weird for some people, and you might not be used to that in a car, but I think what it does is it replicates what we're used to looking at with our smartphones. So when you are mirroring something like Apple CarPlay, what you're seeing there on the screen is exactly like when you're looking at the phone. It all works really well. This particular model grade's got heated seats. All of the controls from the car are through there. And just the general layout of the cabin, the switch gear, the comfort, it's quite insulated. It's really, really a good place to be, especially on longer road trips. But I think this change to the infotainment system, although it's a small one, makes a big, big difference inside the cabin of the Outback. There's space in the second row befitting the large SUV segment, and while some manufacturers waste functionality attempting to offer three rows of seating, the five-seat layout in the Outback is practical. Adults can fit behind tall adults up front, and there's good headroom and visibility in the second row as well. There are outboard heated seats in the second row and two USB ports in our test model as well. The boot space is also useful, 522 litres expanding out to a whopping 1,782 litres when you fold the second row down. All Outback models are powered by a 2.5 litre naturally aspirated four-cylinder boxer engine. It develops 138 kilowatts and 245 newton metres, figures which are up 9 kilowatts and 10 newton metres from the old model. All Outbacks are all-wheel drive, of course, and they feature a CVT that has eight steps to mimic a conventional auto. A couple of things really impress about the Outback driving experience. One is the insulation, very quiet inside the cabin. The engine and the CVT work really nicely together, and we do complain about CVTs regularly, but this is one of the better ones we've tested. So engine and gearbox work together nicely. The CVT has those steps that kind of almost feel like gears, and it all works really well out in the real world. The all-wheel drive system gives you that sort of feeling of confidence, I guess, even though modern electronics have taken up a lot of that gap, but you still know that underneath you, you've got a really proficient all-wheel drive system. The other thing that I find very, very noteworthy about the new Outback is the ride quality. Uh, they've got quite chubby tyres on the rims, so they soak up bumps really, really nicely, but the general suspension tune is very good, so it's never uncomfortable in here. You don't get bashed around inside the cabin, even if you go over sharp speed humps and potholes, things like that. The general ride quality is very, very good. I think that while this works really well around town, uh, and it makes sense around town. It's using 10.5 litres largely around town at the moment, and that makes a lot of sense for Australian buyers. I also think it stands out as a really comfortable and practical road trip vehicle as well. So if you occasionally go on longer trips, 
And Subaru does market this car at people who go mountain biking, go camping, go fishing, that kind of thing. If you do that kind of stuff and you need to load the car up and hit the open road, I reckon the new Outback's gonna do the job very nicely. As ever, Subaru's suite of safety systems is extensive and Outback gets AEB in forward and reverse with support at intersections, lane keep assist, lane centering assist, lane departure warning, lane change assist, driver attention monitoring, evasive steering assist, speed sign recognition with speed limiter, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. There's also a passenger seat cushion airbag, which in the event of a frontal crash, pushes up the front section of the seat base, preventing the front passenger's waist from moving forward or sliding beneath the seat belt. There you go, our thoughts on the all new Subaru Outback. And I guess it'll surprise no one that it's a solid offering from Subaru. Their cars are always impressive and we always like them, but Subaru fans are nothing if not passionate. So let us know what you think in the comments section below. Is there something that you would have liked to have seen in the new Subaru Outback that isn't there? We'd love to hear what you think. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed the video, click on like. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can keep up to date with which videos are going live when. And for the full review, go to caradvice.com.